Welcome to the NWI.com Political Roundtable for Thursday, February 17th. I'm Robert Blask with Assistant Managing Editor of The Times, here with Editorial Page Editor of The Times, Doug Ross. Uh, Mark Kiesling is on vacation this week, so uh, it'll just be the two of us uh, talking about the week's political developments. And uh, it really, the theme for the week seemed to be a lot about labor and education, didn't it, Doug? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot going on in the education sector. Mm -hmm. um, they're talking about all kinds of reforms in Indianapolis at the state house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, among them are are everything from. Um, uh, loosening the restrictions for charter schools mm -hmm. to say that you know basically you can have as many as you want. Yes. Uh, that any mayor, any uh, university can sponsor one. Mm -hmm. So so that that puts them you know throughout the state really. Mm -hmm. And um, on top of that, they're they're uh, saying that um, th there could be changes like uh, for instance. That, that brings us to the labor issue is that the local school boards, you know, basically the state gives the money for instruction. Mm -hmm. So, so the idea is to say that local school boards would only be able to negotiate contracts with teachers that specify wages and benefits. Mm -hmm. So that they can't say, you know, our chalkboards have to be a certain type or, right. or that you know, you know, any number of different restrictions that that they might put in. Right. So, um, the teachers' unions are, are you know, certainly, uh, and the rank and file teachers are really not happy with all of the pace of change, you know, coming so rapidly and, mm -hmm. you know, hitting them right where they live uh, in terms of negotiating. Right. It, it seems like there's been this adversarial uh, relationship between the state's teachers' unions and the uh, superintendent of public instruction, Tony Bennett, ever since he uh, came into office replacing Sue Ellen Reed. That's true. I mean, you know, he came in, he, he made no bones about it. You know, the, the, the quality of education, and, and he's a former school superintendent. Right. You know, right. at a local uh, he, school district. He is, so. he is an agent of change. And he also, at the same time, he's echoing a lot of what the Obama administration and uh, the, uh, uh, sec the, the National Arnie Secretary Duncan. of yeah. Education, Arnie Duncan, echoing a lot of what they're saying in terms of uh, merit pay for teachers and, and, and assessing uh, performance of, you know, based on student performance and things like that. Uh, he's saying a lot of the same things. And, and you know, it, it's kind of a shame that, that we, we've kind of developed this, this you know, I, the two sides, I don't know that they're going to be able to get together and work yeah, on anything, it seems like, that. because Really, the goal is the same. I think right. teachers, teachers' unions, uh, Tony Bennett, you know, everyone in education has the same goal, and that is to increase student performance. That is to create uh, students who are better prepared for uh, the workforce, better prepared for uh, higher education. So, you know, how do we how do we get these sides together to actually start working together on toward these issues? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, we're, we're trying to get them to, to work together, but, you know, uh, Tony Bennett is, is, you know, making it a point to say, you know, when we're talking about the schools being in trouble, we're not talking about all schools, mm -hmm. we're talking about some schools. Yes. And, you know, uh, right now, the some schools are getting a lot of attention because, mm -hmm. you know, Calumet High School is going to that new tech concept, yeah. you know, totally different teaching style. Sure. Um, uh, very High very much like project exactly. oriented online, yeah. right. you know, working as a team, kind of those right. kind of things. Right. I'm, you know, building a, a, a mm -hmm. more of a work ethic for the workplace right. rather than, you know, being a very regimented yeah. thing. You know, uh, one of the new tech uh, consultants that uh, I talked to. I, um, yeah, I mean, when Calumet was going through this, city. made the point of uh, saying, you know, you're not going to be ringing the bells, you know, when classes change mm -hmm. because right. you don't do that in the workplace and we're so trying to train them for the workplace. So, I mean, it's something that I never would have thought of, but it's a very good point. True. There's another yeah, so component to this that, that I think that, that has led to the, the, the tension between the administration, the, not the Bennett, but the Daniels administration and the Republicans in the State House and the teachers' unions, and that's the fact, that, the historic fact that, that teachers and unions and labor in general have always been predisposed to supporting Democrats, both financially and in the, in the voting booth. So you can't deny that there is a political component to this and that Republicans, if they can lessen the power of the unions, it is to their political yeah. benefit. So, I mean, is that really right. Sensitive? And there's another factor in here, too, uh, that's specific mm -hmm. to Indiana, is when 
Daniels took office, day one, I mean literally day mm -hmm. one, he took away the uh, collective bargaining rights from the unions yeah. uh, for state employees. Right. And so now teachers are, in essence, you know, state employees if the state's paying for it. And, you know, the state's talking about, you know, changing their bargaining rights and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course they're scared. Yeah. And, and this whole bargaining rights and, and the right to work, that's come up big as well this week. Uh, this week we saw the uh, steelworkers yeah, union members uh, down in Indianapolis for their lobbying day. Uh, they were down there in force and they are very up in arms about this uh, right to work legislation uh, being pushed by Republicans in the State House. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean this is legislation that that uh, uh, essentially says that you don't have to join the union um, to you know work mm -hmm. you know at, at any particular uh, place and that uh, um, you still get the same benefits in essence. Right. Uh, you, you know, the union side of the argument is, you know, look at look at what all we've done for you. We've given you the eight-hour work week. We've given you uh, the 40-hour week. Yes. We've given you many safety yeah. improvements that mm -hmm. you might not have seen otherwise. Right. And so, you know, the, you know the, that all takes right. money. And the power to collectively bargain uh, as a group, as a unified group, uh, gives you the leverage to to increase your wages, your benefits, uh, so it's led to to a more prosperous uh, worker in the state. Yeah, unless you can collect the workers, you can't collectively work. Right. right, and interesting that you know one of the issues um, we we talk about Indiana being very much more hospitable uh, to business than neighboring states like Illinois, where we've seen the tax, the increased taxes. Indiana has tried to seize upon that, uh, but there's another element. Uh, in Indiana that, that were lags behind neighboring states including Illinois and that's in the, um, the growth of disposable income. Uh, Indiana is, is fairly down low and we actually talked about that with uh, Governor Daniels when he visited us a couple weeks back. Right and, and you know he said his priority is, is uh, to boost personal incomes which we were grateful for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and but that in the meantime, you know, as as they're trying to get the jobs in and and all this stuff, mm -hmm. they're they're worried about you know getting the the high paying jobs. I mean, right. you know, you don't want uh, just you know working poor jobs. You want you know engineers, doctors, lawyers. Sure. Uh, you know the 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 jobs that pay really well. Sure. And uh, his point, uh, which I found interesting in the meantime, was to say that you know the the. Even though the personal income is lower, the disposable income is mm -hmm. less. That um, um, because basically everybody's yeah. wages are, are lower in Indiana. That, that your spending power is better. Yeah, your than cost it might of living elsewhere. is lower. Exactly. You're paying less for basic, so. you know, basic needs, and then you're paying fewer taxes. So I'd still take so. the higher salary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and and that you know that measurement of disposable income was after taxes. So even after taxes. Illinois workers are doing better in terms of income growth than Indiana workers. So that's certainly something that Daniel said that he was concerned about and something that he really wanted right. to do something about. Um, so where do we go? Where do you think things go from here, Doug? Well, um, I, I think it's a, a very political uh, issue. And, uh, you know, frankly, you've got a Republican governor, a Republican House, Republican Senate, you know, the Republicans are running the show. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, making no bones about it. Indiana is open for business. You know, we mean business, uh, yeah. all of these sayings. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, saw just this week the uh, Northwest Indiana Forum and the Indiana Economic Development Corporation teaming up for a big campaign. Yeah, Mitch Robe uh, runs the uh, IEDC, mm -hmm. the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, was, was wearing a, a necktie with a, a bunch of hearts on it. So I asked him about it, and, and uh, he said, well, you know, it's very simple. Of course, it was Valentine's Day. And he says, it's very simple. Indiana loves business. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and that's what's going to run the show. Right. So they're doing their Illinois uh, campaign where right. they're really trying to nudge Illinois business to say, hey, come over to, come over the border to Indiana. So uh, we'll see how effective that is. And then we'll see how these uh, skirmishes in the State House play out as well because uh, they'll have uh, really big implications, certainly for our area, the entire state, but certainly for our area where uh, labor uh, plays such a big role. Uh, it's something we'll be watching very closely. Mm -hmm. So that'll do it for uh, this week. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week with another NWI.com Political Roundtable.